one thing that made Robert Browning famous in English literature, in the history of English literature, is his use of dramatic monologue. Even this, the poem that we're going to deal with, My Last Duchess, is a dramatic monologue. It means a poem in which there is only one character speaking and the rest are silent listeners. So monologue is one person speaking. In Robert Browning's poetry, you find that there is one character talking. We know that there are other characters, other listeners, but those listeners will not say a word. In a dramatic monologue, we figure out the character's personality through the way he's speaking, through his um, opinions that he puts out in the poem. So the character used here in My Last Touches is Alfonso, the Duke of Ferrara. After the death of his last touches, he is ready to get married again. In those days in the English society, we keep talking about this, but women were treated as property. Women were treated just as possession, something to be proud of by men. A messenger comes to the Duke of Ferrara with the proposal, saying that someone, uh, there was a count who wanted to marry his daughter to Alfonso. The messenger here is the silent listener that we're going to be talking about. My last duchess. The character who is speaking here is the duke and he's going to be talking about his duchess who had died. As the duke was walking with the messenger to go and meet the uh, other party who had come with a proposal for his marriage, they stop at a point and look at the picture of the last duchess. The duke tells the messenger that's my last duchess painted on the wall. Look how alive she seemed to be. Now that is what I call a piece of art, a wonder. One day, Frau Pendolf busily painted this whole painting and there she stands, stands as if she's alive. Please take a seat and look at this picture. Look at this wonderful piece of art. So here we find that the Duke is showing other people what a piece of art that wife has been. She has no other value than being a wonderful piece of art. Then the Duke continues saying that, I never reveal this picture just to anybody. But look, you, you are lucky you. Why don't you take a seat and look at this beautiful picture? Look at this beautiful piece of art, its depth and its passion and the beautiful glance on that face, the passionate glance on that face is under my control now because I have the authority to open or close the curtain to anyone. Now this is a dramatic monologue so there is no chance that the messenger will be talking but through the speaker of uh, uh, through the speech of the duke we find that this messenger had also been interacting with him. So he's the duke says that oh so you want to ask me that how this beautiful face how this beautiful painting came uh, into existence. Yes, of course, you have the permission to ask that. There are so many other people who ask me the same question. Sir, she does not give this look, this smile to just me alone. See that smile, that spot of joy? It was not just meant for me. Maybe Fra Pendolf chance to say that uh, my lady's sleeves were covering her wrist too much and that she, she should expose. So maybe she felt shy or maybe she felt that it was praising her beauty or her skin and then maybe she blushed and maybe she smiled. Or maybe Fra Pendolf told her that she had such beautiful skin and paint, painting these artificial pictures and all will never be able to do justice to the beauty that she is. So maybe she thought it was praise and then maybe she blushed. So yes, this smile, this smile may be because Fra Pandolf flirted with her. This is the height of jealousy of the Duke of Ferrara. He was so jealous of his wife and he was so possessive of his wife and he wanted to control every move and every gesture of his, of his duchess that he would go to the extent of suspecting a man of God, a religious man, 
to be flirting with her. We must also remember that this conversation between Fra Pandolf and the Duchess may have never happened. It is just the Duke's suspicion. He's just assuming that maybe that kind of conversation happened so she happened to smile and then they captured that smile in the picture. This is his height of jealousy. Throughout the poem, one thing is clear. He totally treats his last duchess like um, property who was kept alive only to please him. Even after her death, her portrait was kept under his control. You know, like the hunters who keep the skull and the skin of the animals in their living room as a sign of their pride. So also he kept the portrait of the last duchess on the wall, closing and opening whenever he wanted, according to his own pleasure. So that was the condition of women. And Robert Browning in his poems, he openly talks about the uh, gender bias and the society, the evil practices in the society, and also the society's love for art. He talks about the Duke of Ferrara being so obsessed with the painting of The Last Duchess by Fra Pandolf and proudly introducing it to the messenger. It shows uh, the society's nature for the love of art and if you were to write about the character of this Duke of Ferrara, it is true that he has this controlling nature and he is excessively power hungry. He was a jealous husband, possessive husband, so possessive that he did not even like his wife smiling at other people. He continues to say that yes, the Duchess, my last Duchess, she had a heart. A heart that is easily made glad, you know. She has a heart that anyone can please. She looked at everyone and she noticed every little detail, every simple things that we can just ignore. She notices everything. So there, that does not sound like a bad Duchess but it only shows his jealousy. She was a duchess, pure at heart, who appreciates the small little goodness in everything. Whether the Duke confesses or not, we can see it as he narrates the other incidents. And then he continues to tell the messenger that this smile is for everybody, for anyone that comes her way. Whether it is her love for me in her heart, or her love for the setting sun, or her love for the officious fool who brings in a bunch of cherries to please her, or her love for the white mule that she loves to ride in the garden. Same level to all and anybody. My, her love for me is not special at all. Well, yes, maybe when, when I cross her, she smiles at me. But who else does not cross her without the same smile? Also, she used to thank people. She thanked men. Okay, fine, maybe it is good to, th to be grateful and to thank people. But how can she thank other people for their gift and compare that gift to my gift? that is far much greater. I gifted her my family name, a 900 year old title. How dare she treat that as equal to any other gift? And as for me, belonging to such a class and such a social status, I will not stoop down, I will not bow down to, to her level. And I cannot stoop down to correct her behavior. Such nonsense mistake. I'm not good at speaking, but even if I was good at speaking, I would never lower myself to the level. She's just another one of my belongings. So why should I go down to her level to say that you should not do this, this is against the rule, and you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. I cannot lower myself to her level to correct such a silly mistake. Even if I could, and even if I went down to her level, and if I stooped down to her level and 
uh, talk to her about it, still there is some stooping, still there is some lowering of my level. And the Duke of Ferrara was a proud, egoistic man who will never compromise his ego or his pride or his position to bow down and talk to someone who is mere possession to him. He went on to tell the messenger that yes, she used to smile. Whenever I pass her, she used to smile. But who else does not pass with the same smile? I am special. I am her master. She should be under my control. And she kept on smiling at other people, showing the things that irritate me. So at the end, I couldn't bear it. Instead of talking to her about it, I gave commands. So what command did the Duke of Ferrara give? Maybe he gave commands to kill her. I gave commands and all the smiles stopped at once. She never smiled again, nor anybody around her. Maybe he gave commands that she should be killed. But during those days, if a man killed his wife, it's no big deal because the woman was a part of his property possession so whatever he does with his wife it's his family business and no one should interfere so whatever happened to the duchess is mysterious i gave commands and all the smiles stopped and there she stands as if she is alive now come on stand up let us go down and meet the count or meet the new party that has a new proposal for me said the duke to the messenger and continued to say that uh, I know that your master, the Count, is a very rich man, so for dowry, maybe I shouldn't say much, but I'm sure he's going to provide me with ample dowry. Though, of course, his beautiful daughter is my object. Even here, the Duke does not address the uh, his to-be bride as his Duchess or his beloved or, or to become a life partner, but just another object. Then as the Duke and the messenger were walking down, the Duke again shows off another piece of art. Look at this bronze sculpture made by Claus of Innsbruck. It is a sculpture of Neptune trying to tame a seahorse. So the sculpture itself, the bronze sculpture is the, it, it is a statue of the god of sea, Poseidon, known as Neptune. You know, one of the Greek gods saying that this uh, sea god Neptune is trying to tame a seahorse, trying to control a seahorse. Just like he is a jealous, possessive and controlling husband, similarly he likes things that are, you know, more controlling and e keeping everything under his control. He is a megalomaniac. So it is obvious that, you know, a controlling sculpture, a piece of art, where there is control or subjugating of other um, creation is fascinating to him. Now let's see the text. My Last Duchess by Robert Browning. That's my last Duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that a piece of wonder. Now Fra Pendolf's hands work busily a day and there she stands. Will please you sit down and take a look? I said, Fra Pandolf by design. For never rich strangers like you, that pictured countenance, the depth and passion of its earnest glance. But to myself they turn, since none puts down the curtain I have drawn for you, but I. And seemed as they would ask me if they durst, how such a glance came there. So, not for the first, are you to turn and ask thus. Sir, it was not just her husband's presence, only called that spot of joy into the Duchess' cheek. Perhaps Fra Pandolf chanced to say, her mantle laps over my lady's wrist too much, or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, 
too easily impressed. She liked whatever she looked on and her looks went everywhere. Sir, it was all one. My favor at her breast, the drooping of the daylight in the west, the bow of cherries, some officious fool broken from the orchard, the white mule that she rode on the terrace. All and each would draw from her, alike the approving speech or blush at least. She thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how as if she ranked my gift of 900 year old name with anybody's gift who would stoop to blame that sort of trifling even had you skill in speech which i do not have to make your will quite clear to such a one just this or that in you disgusts me here you miss or dare exceed the mark and if she let herself be lessened so nor plainly set her wits to yours forsooth and made excuse even then would be some stooping and i choose never to stoop oh sir she smiles no doubt whenever i passed her but who passes without much the same smile this grew I gave commands, then all smiles stopped together. There she stands as if alive. Will please you rise? We'll meet the company below then. I repeat, the count, your master's known munificence, is ample warrant that no just pretense of mine for dowry will be disallowed. Though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed at starting, is my object. Nay, we'll go together down, sir. Notice Neptune, though, taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which claws of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me. So there was a poem. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.